I remember being at this beautiful Tuscan villa in the middle of the countryside in Italy and walking back to the car to get something and having this moment that something didn't feel right. I was on a trip to Europe with my husband. At the time, we're divorced now. And this was something we always loved to do. We always loved to go and travel and have adventures together and explore new landscapes. And something noticeably different was going on between us. Details that I won't share. But the moment that I had was such a stark contrast to my expectation of how it always was and how it was supposed to be. Beautiful, romantic setting, and scenery, and between us it just felt so cold. We actually spent a lot of time on our phones talking to people back home, whereas before we would sort of bubble up together. I would have noticeable moments like these throughout the entire time that we were together, which was 15 years in total. And I remember actually in the beginning having these moments and because I was so in my head and disconnected from my emotional experience, I didn't know what to do with this information. And some of you are going to go through similar moments like these. And so I want to take time out to tell you to honor your feelings, to really think about your experience and all of the emotions that you have along the way as being relevant information pieces. Because if you are trapped in your mind, If you are trapped in what you think you should do, it can be so subtle that you can have a series of these experiences and you ignore them like I did. And in fact, very early on, I remember talking to a mutual friend saying, I think something is not right. I actually had a conversation about it and my friend gave me great guidance after listening to me and this friend knew both of us very well and he said you're right something is not right I went to him for advice and he gave me advice and I did not take that advice And we continued, and there was this moment, I've talked about it in other episodes, that there was this moment that we broke up, and I decided that I didn't want the life that it was leading to. I wanted to travel. I wanted to explore the world. I would have these series of depressive days (laughs) is the best way to explain it where I was so interested and curious about everything and exploring and doing things and I felt as though there was a compromise that had to be made and this was normal for relationships and I compromised and he compromised too but sometimes those compromises hit me in a way that I couldn't really express. And so I would have these down periods where I couldn't explain what was wrong. I just knew something was wrong, but I shrugged it off and I put a smile on my face because that's what you do. And so when we broke up, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go and do something different now but we got back together and then we got married 
And we went to couples counseling to work through the things that scared me. And we did a lot of amazing work together and helped each other grow into professional adults. We were so young when we started. You know, it, it's kind of funny to look back. And we built each other up and we were great partners. And I thought then that we were life partners, as he did too. But in Italy, when I had that flash, I knew at this subconscious level that it was the end and needed to be the end. And I think there was a part of me that was preparing for that and began to let go. We were divorced two years later, or initiating the process. Reality shifting requires you to listen to when things are not right, because these are signals and preludes that you have an exit ramp coming up, that you have another option that you have another lifeline. And when you are stuck in a mindset that says, I have to stick it out no matter what, and even when it doesn't feel right, and in this case, there was no heavy intuition. There was no, it wasn't like he was treating me poorly. It wasn't like that at all. It was a compatibility mismatch in certain key areas that my friend identified that I ignored. (laughs) And I thought, ah, it's not a big deal. But it actually was a big deal. (laughs) And, you know, it takes an outside perspective to then not listen to it. If it gives you any indication how stubborn I can be and intent on learning certain lessons. But I experienced a lot of positive things from the relationship. So when I look back, I don't see it as a mistake. But I have some mixed feelings about it, wondering what it would be like. And I talk about this in the Artist Path episode. Had I chosen a different path earlier? Because now I'm here pursuing that path that I was always supposed to pursue. And it feels right And it feels different. And I now understand, looking backwards, why the configurations of the lifestyle never really set well with me. And the compromises that I made, I did so to be a team player, but I did so at the expense of waiting to get to my path of purpose waiting to get to my awakening journey, my consciousness expansion journey, my self-expression journey, my artist journey. And so I had multiple exit ramps along the way. And it took me relenting and saying, yeah, it's time. Even though, even though on paper, it was a great relationship even though by society standards, we were very successful. We were successfully married. We had a great partnership. And yet deep down at the emotional level, there was something, a configuration that wasn't clicking the way that it was supposed to. And we lasted a long time, but those last couple of years, if we were to stretch them out, and this was the model that we had, our parents, both sets had have <laughs> very long lasting marriages where you tough it out no matter what. And it's not always pretty, but it works. And everybody's happy in the end, even if there's moments of cloudiness or storms. And everybody settled in to their routine, and their life, and I mean, my parents can't imagine being without each other, and they still love each other very, very much, 
even though they have their moments like all married couples do. So this is the model that we had and his parents got remarried to each other. And, you know, it's like they renewed their vows. So there's heavy subliminal pressure when you have role models like that to fit yourself into these paradigms of what has come before. And I know that things are changing and people are a lot more fluid with relationships. But there are still a lot of you out there that want your one and your only. Especially when it comes to your soul partnerships. And there are a lot of people that are wanting their twin flame or their divine counterpart. And in my experience, holding on to the concept of the one and who's the one raises the probability that you're going to be stuck in a situation or a configuration where it doesn't actually feel right. And it's only right for a limited amount of time. There are a lot of different soul contract templates out there. Some people have soul contracts with those that are family, that are friends, that are lovers, that are estranged lovers, that are toxic lovers, that are affair partners, that are cousins. And, you know, it just, it takes so many different forms. And some of those soul contracts, some of the most powerful ones actually, are the ones that light a fire of catalytic energy under you to change in a meaningful way that shifts you to your destiny or your destination quicker than you could do on your own. And once that fire is lit, sometimes that's all the the contract is about, is lighting the flame, is literally just And then you're supposed to take that flame, nurture it and grow it and meet another soul contract, which then turns it into a real fire for you, not just a flash in a pan. And then sometimes there's even a bonfire partner. But if you get stuck at the little one that's just lighting the kindling, then you're stuck in this cycle of non-sustainability. And you will have a feeling like it's not right. And that's your signal to start moving on. And you can have this feeling when things are okay. When there's nothing really on the surface to fight about or they're not mistreating you, it's a really a gray area. Alternatively, you can have this feeling if you're about to get married and you feel that, oh, I just got chills, somebody needs to hear this. You're about to get married, but deep down you know that they're not your partner, your soul partner. It's a marriage of convenience, a marriage of checking the boxes, a marriage of momentum. Kind of like, oh, I guess this is happening. I guess this is what we're supposed to do. And that's the progression of my own marriage. It was sort of like, oh, well, I guess we get married now, <laughs> you know? And it made sense. And it was logical and rational. And we did. And it, it was perfectly fine. But it was not meant to, to last And there are some of you that are entering into relationships with people that don't really challenge you or fulfill you, but those are safer, aren't they? And in fact, your soul partner might even be right next to you, waiting for a chance if you gave it to them. So, 
the feeling of not being right, feeling like it's not right, is a prelude to another option that is opening itself up to you. If you think of reality as a series of steps and decisions in the material world, where if you turn right, that leads to certain people and encounters. If you have a lunch at this place, then you might bump into somebody that might open a door for you. But that means that you're not going left that day and eating at this other place where you would bump into somebody different or maybe nobody at all. And so really navigating through reality is like a choose your own adventure book on a day-to-day basis. And when you're in tune with intuition and serendipity, you can actually tap into that feeling of right place, right time. This is one of the higher order functions of intuition, the magical ones. You can tap into that to feel, should I go right? Should I go left? Should I go to this restaurant or that restaurant? And when you are exercising that muscle, it becomes stronger. So then you can feel like, you know, it doesn't feel right to get on the train and go to work today. Said some people on 9-11. And it made no sense when they made that decision, right? They didn't have any information that told them. Except this feeling. It doesn't feel right. We live in a world where you have to explain yourself when things don't feel right. And sometimes you might be locked into relationships where you have to convince other people that it's not right for you to decide in a certain way, especially in codependent dynamics where people have a lot of leverage in your life. And so you might find yourself frustrated saying it doesn't feel right. And they're like, well, why doesn't it feel right? And you're like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. And you try to come up with something. You're like X, Y, and Z. They're like, ah, don't worry about it. That's stupid. Don't worry about it. And then you start to doubt yourself. This is gaslighting, self-gaslighting, because you're taking that feeling that you have about your timeline, about your highest path, and you're letting somebody else weigh in on it. And their highest path may not actually be related to yours. So they're going to communicate their opinion from their mind, not from the same place of feeling. I remember also being in a soul contract actually a couple of soul contract experiences and having this it doesn't feel right moment it feels really wrong (laughs) on one of them I was like whoa something is what something is really wrong that one led me to a nightmare so it's important (laughs) to say that when you have these feelings they're actually very very important because they are indicators that you might be headed into a nightmare. Especially if it verges into the, this feels wrong. And if you also feel scared and have that, and then you start having that more often and more often. But when you are trapped in your head, you have a tendency of saying, oh, it's me, I'm overreacting, I'm, making too big of a deal out of this. With my nightmare soul contract, not my husband, somebody different, it took sitting down at lunch with a friend, telling them to the best of my ability what was going on. And different friend, this is years later, (laughs) and them telling me, I'm worried, this is not right. You should leave town. And I drove back to my apartment and I did exactly that. 
within an hour. And that time I listened. And I'm glad that I listened.